Welcome back to Federal Hall. The first Congress met on this site, and it was here they drafted the Bill of Rights, a document that now lives at the National Archives, and you can find easily online. Now, type in the word millennial online. We found 39 million hits. It's just one indication that this group, aged 20 to 36, is one for the history books. And that's especially true in North Carolina. In Durham, millennials make up 40% of the population, with white, black, and Latinos represented in nearly equal numbers. In the presidential election, they gave Hillary Clinton 79% of their vote. But Durham's vote didn't swing the state. Trump won. Correspondent Diane Roberts discovered that millennial voters are focused on revitalizing their city, refusing to be paralyzed by the electoral bitterness. Durham, North Carolina, population almost 230,000, is emerging as the it city in the New South, taking aim at recruiting and retaining millennials. It felt right to settle in and really grow some roots here. Megan Jones's five-year-old business fits right in. The 29-year-old is co-owner of Mercury Studio, selling workspace memberships to entrepreneurs, similar to what you buy at the gym. I benefited from the city financing in that, and I'm so grateful. As the city replaces long-standing industries like big tobacco, Megan is aware some are being pushed out. And I think now the gentrification versus urban development conversation is right in our faces. You can see it when you drive downtown. Jeff Durham, yes, that's his real name, is president and CEO of Greater Durham's Chamber of Commerce and is trying to balance pain with progress. I like to believe that through uh, public and private partnerships, uh, through community outreach, um, we will found a way to really balance growth, job growth, uh, economic development. Look at all your old swim pictures. Despite Durham's best efforts to keep young talent, 20-year-old nursing student Gabrielle McCardle doesn't picture herself staying in the Triangle region after graduation, even though she loves Durham's diversity, evident in her circle of school friends. We had a half Iranian, a Sri Lankan, half Indian, white, black, like all different, and it just didn't register with me because they were my friends. So when you look at 2017, new year, new president, um, this is the new South, what are your hopes and dreams for this area? I hope people can just be more kind and see that we have more alike than unalike. 19-year-old computer science major Marcus Williams wants to see more kindness too. He fears four years of divisiveness after a campaign he found distasteful. As a young African American and as a millennial, looking at this election during the primaries, I have to be honest, I wasn't going to vote because I didn't like either candidate. When this graffiti showed up after the election, he was personally hurt. And all these people are divisive and, you know, sometimes racist or hostile towards people of color or minorities, and we can all come together and unite as one country. Do you think that can happen, Marcus, truthfully? It's going to take a lot of work um, and a lot of strong-willed people who are willing to have conversations instead of arguments, and instead of constantly bickering back and forth and going through four years of, I don't like him, get him out of office, he's not my president, and four years of, you need to get in line, this is your president to, you know, fall back. I just want everybody to be able to come together and live peacefully and harmony. In Durham, for Matter of Fact, I'm Diane Roberts.